MagicCon Chicago kicked off 2024's Year of MagicCons, and with it, the unknown event. What are its secrets this time? Let me tell you all about it. Good morning, Magic. I'm Gavin Verhey from Wizards of the Coast, and these two unknown events got into the spirit of murders at Karlov Manor, one on Saturday and one on Sunday. Plus, the Saturday one benefited the Trevor Project, a great charity, and what's better than playing Magic for charity? The events sold out a month ago, capping at 600 players apiece. I am honored you all wanted to play in this event so much, and it's also a good reminder to register for them early at future Magic Cons. Players played sealed deck, but not just any normal sealed deck. They built up 60 card commander decks with the rule they could use any two monocolor identity legends as though they had partner, then played 1v1 games with them. A little bit of commander, a little bit of normal limited. There was a little twist though. To keep in theme with the mystery of murders at Karlov Manor, players started with their commander face down. They wouldn't be revealed until they were cast, making each game a bit of a mystery. What commander or colors is my opponent even playing? I made this one sheet too, in case anybody had trouble hearing the announced rules. But it was more than just some rules. Keep that all in mind for the next part as we go through the much bigger piece of discussion, the playtest cards. I made several new playtest cards for this event, plus reprinted 13 older ones that worked well for the event. And today, I want to go through them. Let's get started. I'm going to start with the non-legends and then go to the legends because there's something unique to talk about there. First up, Illuminating Detective. Whenever I do a new event-wide rule for Unknown, it's fun to have a few cards play into that. So I made a cycle of cards that cared about the face-down nature of the commanders. And in the case of the white one, you get to take a peek at all of theirs. Secrets, begone. Or it's just a 2-2 flyer if you draw it later on. Next, identify the culprit. I want to give a big shout out to Alexander Smith, who sent me a ton of unknown designs for this event, and this original idea was one of his. One thing that's fun to play with is the theme of the set, and this was a really neat top-down guessing game. How strong is it? I'm still not sure myself. Windy City Elemental is a card that just makes me laugh, because you get the Windy City's blessing, and Chicago is known as the Windy City. Sometimes unknown cards making you smile is good enough, and it's a very functional card, but that little bit of extra flavor is what makes it so delightful to me. Irrefutable evidence is something that would be difficult to get to work in the magic rules, but in unknown, sure. These cards don't all have to work in the full-on magic rule sense. Counting as mana value 10, it's the ultimate collect evidence enabler. Educated Detective is the blue member of this cycle, giving you a bit of surveilling and then turning into a draw engine once your commanders are revealed. Notably, most of these reward you playing a single commander since it's easier to get that revealed, and I'm always happy to boost people just playing one commander since partners gives you essentially an extra card, which is so powerful. Elemental, my dear. Well, elemental, I suppose. The card mechanics really spring from the name here, and it certainly creates a huge swing giving you a ton of clues and a big creature too. Disguise Agent was a neat idea that really only works with face down commanders. It lets you disguise your commanders, which normally doesn't really make sense since your opponent will know what they are, but here it actually works. Well, at least for the first casting. Surprisingly strong too, since it lets you dodge higher commander taxes. Demon Detective is the black member of this cycle. It's an undercosted flyer that just needs your commanders revealed. Similarly, it rewards only having one commander and getting it out early. It definitely was better in some decks than others. Life at Stake is another fun minigame card. Either you kill off a creature and pay some life, or your opponent loses some life. I don't think it's very strong, as it's usually just going to deal a few points of damage, but it is a fun little bidding minigame. Maybe it needed a tad more. Blood Spatter Vampire turns all their clues into blood. Oh no, what a downgrade. And it's a 2-1 flyer to boot. A pesky little guy. This is rules text we could theoretically do somewhere, but I don't know where would put it. I'm glad we could try it here. Okay, you all know doubling season? Well, it's time for having season. You probably get what it does from the name and mana cost alone. Doubling season originally appeared on Ravnica, so why not do this little callback here? Impressive Rat just wants to make a very special rat hole in Chicago. They can still tap their land, though they do have to give you a clue in the process. The real masterstroke here to me in this design, courtesy of Alexander, is that reminder text. The land continues to intrigue. Excellent. Aggressive Detective is the red member of the cycle and also sports a great rhyming name. It deals damage if your commanders have been revealed. Yeah, I mean that all checks out for red and an aggressive detective. 
Guess who? I suppose the set theme really lends itself well to mini games because here's a fun little one where your opponent has to guess what creature you're looking for or you get a creatures of theirs for free. I didn't want to make this too strong because a lot of people usually don't memorize exactly what cards are in their deck, especially when there are brand new playtest cards, but when it went off, it was a lot of fun. Ravnica has gates. Ravnica has investigate. So how about investa gate? This gives you some Ravnica gates to really fix up your mana, plus a clue to boot. Growing Detective is the green member of the cycle, and, well, yeah, it really does what it says here. Primetime Suspect is a clever play on, of course, Primeval Titan, whose nickname is Primetime. On its own, it's already pretty neat as a card that can get one land, but if you're suspected, well, then you're a full-on Primeval Titan. This card might actually be ridiculous, but hey, it's a lot of fun. 8 O'Clock features Populate, Proliferate, Investigate, Regenerate, and Replicate, all of which end in 8. Yep. That's the whole deal and connection here. I don't know why it makes me smile, it just does. Melvin's Rejoice. Have you ever heard Loading Ready Run's tale of the Simic's Law? Well, now you actually can cast it. Mmm, yummy. Just don't ask what the Simic put in it. Karloff's Crossbow is a little reference to a plot device and one often seen in these kind of genres. Can you figure it out? It's got Forecast, you want to show it every turn, and then you finally destroy a creature at the end. That's right, it's our take on Shekhov's gun. If it appears early on, it must be fired later. And so it is here. Deep dish pizza. It takes a bit to come out of the oven, but man, it's so tasty, if scalding hot. This icon of Chicago is here on a magic card, and by all accounts, pretty good. Whether you think it's pizza or not, this is certainly a card to put into your deck. Interrogation Robot plays with the unhinged card and occasional cube card, who, what, where, when, why by letting you cast one side of it each turn. A callback that I really enjoy and fitting for an interrogation. You know Gilded Lotus, but what about Gilded Lotus? This uses the pledge mechanic also featured on Guildmark, which was in a previous unknown event and also reprinted here. It's pretty close to just Gilded Lotus and that card is sweet, so this one is pretty good too. And of the non-legends, we finally have Guild Pact. Playing with the Pact cycle from Future Sight, this gives you some mana, but then forces you to pay it next turn or lose. A little play on words there. Okay, so now let's dig into the Legends. There's something pretty unique going on here that you might have heard about on social media over the weekend. Can you guess what all these were inspired by? Let me run through them. You can post your guesses for each in the comments down below. First up, we've got the Knight of Weeks, a one drop knight that gets better when you get up to a week's worth of counters. You might notice that one stray word at the bottom, more on that in a moment, stay tuned. The Asker of More Mana is a stacks player's dream, which constantly asks your opponent for one more mana, even for that one weird ability on Quenchable Fire, as the reminder text says. The Curve Keeper wants you to have a perfect mana curve. If you can get that setup just right, it offers a huge bonus to your team. The Keeper of Favorite Cards is a soldier that lets you make your own list of favorites. As your list grows longer and longer, you end up with more favorites and more bonuses. And keep in mind that your favorites list doesn't reset if it goes away and comes back. The Value Knight and his trusty pal, Sir Asha, is a knight that is all about, well, value. Set up a big turn and then draw a ton of cards and pump it up to huge heights. The Crab Queen is going to give you plenty of crabs. Which one is hard to say, ranging from the meager Skitter Eel or Ruin Crab all the way up to Cherix. Crab fans, rejoice. The Fish Brewer makes these gold fish tokens when it enters or attacks, which in turn gives you a bunch of Panharmonicons. This is going to be a fun one to make some wacky deck around. The Rhystic Storyteller asks if you pay the one in a whole new way. Build around flavor and telling those stories. Who needs sleeves, anyway? The Keeper of Dark Packs gives you an exciting dream. Keep drawing cards at a trivial price. What's not to love? Hey, well, where are you going? Don't you want to draw 16 cards and lose 16 life? The Disciple of Vess, a big favorite from the weekend, is a Kalia of the Vast meets Liliana Vess. I remember walking over to a few tables and seeing multiple Lilianas in play, which, well, yeah, you really don't want this thing to attack you multiple times. The Knight of Land Drops is for any Knights fans out there who always seem to miss their Land Drops. You know any of those? Anyway, it also partners out of the command zone with any knight you want, letting you team up your favorite knights together. The Crimson Avenger played particularly nice with the Hidden Commander rule, letting you get your opponent with it as a surprise. It counterbalances their spell by giving you a similarly constant one of your own. 
The crafter is going to turn all your random pieces of scrap into awesome jewelry and bling to deck your creatures out with. An affinity for artifacts helps you recast it each time too. The spike cactus is a throwback to the spike creature type, which enter with counters and then can distribute them out. But with a commander focus, every time you cast it from the command zone, it just gets bigger and bigger. The bear force pilot pilots what I would affectionately call Bear Force 1. It is a green card that makes a flying creature look, don't ask too many questions. Notably, there is a missing bit of information here. The vehicle should be a base 0 0. You need the bears to pilot it, after all. The Roaring Toe Claws wants you to get tappy and then untappy with your big creatures. Send this creature into battle with its buddies and then watch as they grow huge the next turn. The Water Morrow copies itself and then cares about tokens and more Morrows. If you ever wanted to build your Morrow deck, this is a card for you to give a try. Though in this setting, the abundance of clues definitely let it hit strongest. The Sprinkler of Stardust calls back to Winota, but for instance and sorceries? There's certainly a wild deck to build here, giving you spells that when they connect, cast copies of themselves. The Scholar of Seas answers many Magic the Gathering players question. When are we getting a Bant Murpho Commander? In full on magic, not quite yet, but hopefully this will tide you over. If you want to see this card and some other unknown commanders in action, the Professor actually did an episode of Shuffle Up and Play featuring it. Go check it out. The Beleaguered Boxer is a real unique one. It asks you to build a deck that you then evolve over time. Sort of like a Commander Boxing League experience, you get to crack open a box, build your deck, and then tweak it every time you play. It was a blast watching people go grab some boosters from the nearby vendors and see what they opened. The Dogron Master is for fans of both dragons and dogs and armadillo cloaks, of course. It attaches a cloak to itself, so a 5-4 lifelinking trampling flyer is pretty good on its own, but if you slam down more dragons or dogs, it gets out of hand fast. But don't worry, they're all good boys. The Duke of Midrange is for all those Jund fans out there. Which of these classic mid-range cards would you like? Notably, this card has two errors. It's supposed to cast them without paying its mana cost, and its toughness should be star plus one to match the rules text. So if you play it, just note those two things. The Rebellious Intelligence gives you a card every turn. Sure, it's a random card, but the Gigantho-like ability below helps you cast it. May this rebel always give you the spins you're looking for. Now those are all the cards in the packs, but there are a few more to cover. Unknown events always have a prize card, and this one is no exception. When you finish your matches, you can go up and, well, collect one. The collector tells you to go out and get your card signed. Predictably, I signed so many of these. But wait, what's this on the card about the unknown event puzzle? Okay, let's go back to all those individual words at the bottom of the legends. They seem a little random, but you might notice something if you look close. Their collector numbers are all over the place. I mean, why is the Knight of Weeks RW06 and the Asker of More Mana RW35? Well, none of the numbers repeat between these 23 cards. In fact, if you take all 23 of them and line them up by collector number, you get Destroy Target Creature with a name that has a 5 or fewer letter length difference from the person who signed the discarded card. And that's the missing ability off the Collector, the perfect card for your signed cards commander deck. Feel free to write it in, tell your friends, or otherwise, if you play the card. Okay, but that's not all. On Friday, I held another You Make the Unknown card panel. The audience made three different cards, and each player in the event was handed one of the three. They're quite a wide range of designs, so let's look at them. Up first is Trash Panda, a card which digs into your opponent's graveyard and even has the wild new mechanic Opponent Dredge. Normally you can't put cards into your opponent's graveyard or hand, but sure, Unknown can break those rules. Second is that which was completed, a frightening fusion of Eldrazi and Phyrexians. If you ever see one of these, you're in trouble. Annihilator and Poison Counters fighting side by side. And finally, in a much more local flair, Urza's Hot Dog Stand. For anybody who, like me, isn't from Chicago, I've been told that ketchup on hot dogs is a big no-no there, which is why the protection from red was critical. Enjoy Magic's first vehicle land. And there you have it, all the cards from the first unknown events of the year. What did you think? Any favorites? Let me know in the comments down below. The next unknown event should be at MagicCon Amsterdam. So Europe, get ready. I'll talk with you again soon. And in the meantime, may you enjoy your journeys to the unknown. You got this.
I was stunned. I had talked with him as recently as the night prior, and now he was gone. One thing was clear. We needed to finish the vision we had and bring this product to life in the best possible way. While it was going to still take a little bit longer because of our time,